Hello. Hey, Michael. How are you? Doing all right. How are you doing? Oh, pretty good. Just, uh, yeah. How was your Thanksgiving? Oh, pretty good. Uh, uh, pretty good. Uh, got to see. So my brother's been out traveling uh, in an RV for the past several months. So uh, got to see him for the first time in a while. That was nice. Uh, my parents were there. Overall, pretty good. How about you? How was your uh, Thanksgiving? Pretty good. Visit my parents in Connecticut. I'm still here. Um, pretty chill. Yeah. We cool. don't really know how to cook. So we waited to get invited to Thanksgiving, which worked out pretty well. <laughs> we ate a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been working on recently um mostly that that secure software factory uh um, thing which you know at some point we we would like to um officially announce still waiting on internal folks to sort of uh give the okay but we have a lot of stuff in there um if you're interested mm -hmm. in checking so that out um uh yeah um you know we're using uh qlang to sort of configure all the different pieces and so that like things like hey keys that are used by tasks can also be given to kyverno in the same sort of you know you could just sort of say hey when i deploy the secure software factory i'm deploying it out as like you know one configuration and it'll automatically sort of, you know, we're, we're generating good interfaces for these things and yeah, yeah. So that's, that's a, a lot of it. Um, also looking at, uh, at some point started talking with, uh, Santiago and some of the other folks, uh, like Jacques around that, that idea of, uh, the universal asset graph or the hypergraph, like just mm -hmm. this idea of, Hey, Google has a, a a massive database with all the the information regarding every application and where it's installed, and and metadata regarding those applications and the scans, you know, against them and whatever. And it's like, how can you do the same sort of thing, right? You know, we have Recore, we have Cosign, and these the sign metadata, but how can you you can't currently run queries against it? So, is there mm -hmm. something out there that you know we can start to build to help to answer the questions of not just, did somebody sign off on this? It's okay, somebody signed off that the SBOM is correct or whatever, but hey, now that I've installed this, can I go back and transitively figure out all the things that are going on and did other people do it and so on and so forth? Yeah, so well, having some discussions on that. How about you? What have you been uh, working on? Same sort of usual stuff, um, a lot of Tecton related things. So we got like the new salsa provenance format into chain so I'm hoping to do a release today um and yeah hopefully we can like we can, we can be, like, converge on that um I have like a proposal for actually like properly integrating Spire into Tecton so hopefully that will get merged by the end of the year and then we'll probably work on it next quarter um and then generally just like planning for 2022 and seeing what, what we're going to be doing there's a lot going on cool all right let me also just uh, share this. So um, Brendan did say that it was supposed to be somebody uh, demoing today, um, potentially from Amazon regarding some supply chain stuff they're doing, but uh, mm -hmm. trying to make sure that there still isn't confusion around the times, um, yeah. the times uh, because as far as I knew, it was just for two weeks. There was like some, you know, uh, with like some time zone differences and whatever. Oh. Um, All right, let me go and ping some folks and double check here. <gasps>
right. they're getting back to me here <laughs> so we'll see um Oh, oh, so it's for next week. Sorry. Sorry. Apparently it's next week. Okay. So this is, oh, okay. Uh, okay. So I guess it's just um, us. Uh, just a reminder. Uh, let me just send a reminder to everybody <laughs> just to, just in case um um okay uh Marina, how about yourself? Uh, anything interesting you've been working on in the supply chain space? Hi, yeah, let's see. I've been doing a bunch with the um, kind of tough and Node v2 work, um, basically trying to work on getting tough metadata onto registries. Um, so you can do kind of native verification of, of all of that stuff. Um, so that's coming along. Um, nothing really, you know, nothing quite finished, but there's a lot of, you know, some stuff happening there. And then, um, um, I think, I think, I think I'll like, like noteworthy, just a few, um, a lot, a lot of stuff on tough and updates, but I don't know that we need to get into all of that. So. <laughs> cool. Um, definitely interested in when the tough stuff, uh, tough in the registry sort of stuff lands, love to, to, to see it. Uh, do you yeah, have any links? Yeah, i a demo maybe here once once everything's working. So okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say if there's any PRs or anything or like um, uh, any sort of enhancement proposal stuff, feel free to sort of link it in the chat. Uh, hi, Hector. Um, it's gonna be a probably a quiet one today, but just wanted to link this again. Um, you know, feel free to, you know, put your attendance in here. It's going to be probably a quick one today. I, I don't anticipate it being more than a few more minutes unless uh, a bunch of other folks um, uh, uh, arrive. Um, just sort of giving some updates, not a whole lot of updates from the this actual, you know, uh, the, the work that this group is doing because we're still waiting on um, the uh, technical writers from the CNCF to clear through some things. It sounds like it might still take a couple more weeks because of the holidays and everything else. A lot of folks are off. A lot of folks are, you know, um, so most likely either by, you know, around uh, Christmas, New Year's time, we'll, we'll send out a sort of, um, what you call it, a uh, request for sort of comment on the, the paper to the broader community. Um, if not right near the end of the year, then very, very early next year, um, that will uh, we'll be doing that. Um, and then besides that, we're just kind of chatting about like, if there's anything else in the soft, the supply chain space, supply security space that any of us have been sort of working on. All right. Thanks for the great uh, summary. Thank you. I just came to, to catch up on whatever was going on. Uh, thank you. Sure. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, Brendan, did you want to, do you have any updates on any of the software supply chain stuff? No updates for me this week. I just got distracted looking around on some of the image signing stuff in notary and forgot that we had the call already. I was like, whoops, missed it, but yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it sounds like some of that, I know the stuff that I'm very interested in is uh, some of the, um, uh, whatchamacallit, the, the, the two main things that it sounds like are, are still being worked on, but, but they're moving along is uh, getting chains to sort of, um, or rather I should just say more Tecton 
more generally to to generate in total layouts automatically, um, as well as the uh, the chains plus you know spire sort of integration work, because um, that's going to open up a whole lot of things. Um, cool. And then, uh, I, as I mentioned to, to Priya, but, uh, we're, you know, working on this secure software factory thing. Um, it's not officially announced or anything like that. This is just, uh, some of the stuff that we're, we're sort of poking around we're still trying to kind of get the approvals to sort of make a big announcement about it. But, um, this is some stuff that we're working on, uh, with regards to sort of, Taking all the different pieces like the Tecton and and Kyverno and and uh, the configuration for them and the policy around them and 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 how to sort of generate interfaces behind these things so that they can sort of generate um, uh, you know attestations uh, show that they are it's also compliant and and all that good stuff. All right. um, any other topics or anything else? Otherwise, we can kind of uh, end it end it real early. All right, cool. So I believe, at least according to Brendan um, uh, Lum, uh, next week uh, we will be having. Oh, okay. So I'll let Tripod join. Give an update, but I believe next week. Um, somebody from Amazon who's going to be giving a talk about some of the supply chain stuff that they're doing there. Um, cool. cool. Uh, hi, Shripad. Um, so yeah, it's going to be probably a, a short one uh, this week, just sort of giving any update. You know, there's not really any updates on the work that this group is doing outside of just what individual members are doing. So if you have anything interesting that uh, from the supply chain side that you've been working on or your team's been working on that you think is interesting, um, you know, feel free to to share an update. Uh, Shripad, if you're talking, it's you're on mute. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, sorry, I was there. I just saw your message. I didn't realize the meeting was on. Yeah. So, few things that uh, we're working on is uh, one was the S bomb generations. So the, there was one tool that we recently open source that captures basically all the SBOM generations today. They rely on what package managers can discover, right? What you can discover with PIP, what you can discover with apt. So, but if you're bringing in dependencies through like wget or curl or tard or gz make make install, those are uh, not captured. So we basically open source. Let me put the links in here. And uh, we're basically just uh, working on uh, uh, adding this uh, few things in here. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm discussing with uh, Jim, Jim Baguaria from Kiverno on uh, how we can basically include the uh, support for admission controllers for Tecton pipelines. Uh, so there was one admission controller that we are building. So we are looking to basically say, okay, if, if we can build it as a part of Kiverno uh, policy engine. Uh, yeah, uh, I think that's uh, pretty much what uh, I don't have any update. But yeah, I'd, maybe in, if we have some time in next meeting, we can do some demo of uh, some of the work we have been doing. Cool. Yeah. So I think next week is going to be a presentation from the Amazon folks, but uh, I don't know how long that's that's going to take. But yeah, we can definitely sort of tentatively put you on for next week. If not, then then whenever the next meeting is, I. It's I, I don't remember exactly when uh, the holidays are because I know uh, there's probably going to be a, a few weeks where most folks are are out. Um, yeah, and yeah, uh, I think uh, you mentioned that now the work is basically next year. The work is to build the reference implementation for. Uh, um, there's a couple of different things that are going on, and I think we need to sort of chat with the leads, like uh, you know Brendan and and uh, and well, so Andres is the the lead specifically for this project. But like the, I think that there's going to be some discussion uh, about some of this. There's also discussion about how to work with OpenSSF and some of the other sort of Linux Foundation groups and how to split up some of that work, right? Because I think there's going to be there's you know some concern that or not concern, but 
we don't, you know, there's going to be certain things that we're going to be very focused on because we're cloud native computing foundation. Um, so it's going to be very focused on cloud native and then there's going to be more generic sorts of things that are probably going to be more of a focus from the perspective of uh, the, you know, for just generally like, hey, open source security, um, and which may fall more under the open SSF. So I believe there's going to be some discussions happening in the coming weeks between uh, open SSF leads and 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 uh, CNCF leads to kind of figure out like what makes sense to collaborate on what makes sense for CNCF to take what makes sense for open SSF to take. So that's uh, and then I think some of the stuff that will come out of that is you know things to work on um, as kind of this next phase. Um, you know my my personal opinion is yeah I think we want to turn that document into a living sort of architecture because this isn't um you know this isn't something like uh, you know the gang of four book where like things are all relatively set in stone you know nobody's really coming up with totally new you know software paradigms you know every every few days it's like whereas with the supp software supply chain stuff you know um new features are coming out daily uh, new ways of approaching it are coming out, you know, weekly. There's, you know, if you look at any of the stuff that's obviously even in the paper, that so there's a lot of stuff in there that's fairly contentious. And so some of this stuff is still sort of being um, figured out. So I think some of that's going to end up causing the document to become somewhat a living document. And then I think the, you know, I would definitely push for um, next steps to start figuring out, you know, can we write code? That does some that does these things that we talked about in the reference architecture, right? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I, I know that you know I've already posted here a few times, but the things that we're working on in the open source space is this sort of thing. Um, we, you know, hopefully in the coming weeks we'll sort of make a big announcement about it. But re regardless, like it's you know we're, we're you know we're looking to work with folks uh, uh, on some of that, and, and I hope this group also looks at like, hey, how can we start to, whether it is um, work with the other open source tools to build some of the features that we need, or otherwise build a, a sort of implementation of this thing, um, I think is going to be like really important because, uh, you know, one of the things that outside of like this group of, you know, experts here, um, a lot of folks I've been talking to have been sort of um, commenting that like, oh, supply chain security seems really hard. Like this isn't, you know, I can't just spin up, you know, I have a Jenkins, I can't just install a Jenkins plugin that does the supply chain security stuff for me. Um, and so on that, I think we need to start to show, you know, it's uh, what's, what do they say with the Kubernetes stuff? Like, you know, is Kubernetes boring yet? Is supply chain security boring yet? No, we need to we need to work to make it boring because right now there's like a ton of stuff that that makes it very complicated. Um, and so, yeah, I, I think I would definitely push for next year to, to to in the very least start writing code for this sort of stuff, um, or and and writing code that like ties the very, very things that folks are doing together, whether it's like um, you know tough or or you know sig store or, or um, you know, the, the stuff that like Tecton and Chains is doing with Spire and so on and so forth and getting it to actually uh, tie it all together so that you can, you know, show it off and, and sort of have some of the, you know, you can make a claim that, hey, we are pretty sure this thing did not get compromised because we're doing all these things. We're signing them the right way. We're following all the best practices and the best practices document. We're following how the reference architecture says it should be built and, and so on. Um, yeah, and I believe also in the coming weeks, there's some of the Nix folks are going to probably, uh, give a demo about some of the things, um, 
with regards to sort of how uh, Nix handles supply chain security. Um, and, uh, you know, in particular, how Nix does stuff like, hey, they build a Merkle tree of all the dependencies up to what they call the stage zero builder, which allows them to then say, hey, we know literally all the source code of um, everything that's included in our environment at any time. Right, because we could always go back and look through the tree, the Merkle tree, and and know exactly um, all the dependencies and those dependencies and so on and so forth, um, all the way back up the chain to what they call like the stage zero builder, which is like a minimal, you know, compiler, which then compiles all the other stuff that they need, you know, like GCC and everything else, um, and you know how maybe some of those techniques uh, can be adopted by other projects to start to, you know figure out um, what's what's in your supply chain. So like what you were mentioning, Shripad, like, hey, if if you're W getting something, like what are the concern, you know, how do you kind of figure out how to make an S-bomb out of that? And, and, and then, you know, also in addition to that, like if you're W getting, but you're also not validating the hash of the thing, how do you know that like, if I run the if I run that same build twice, am I pulling down a new version of a thing? Did somebody swap out the you know the tarball or whatever that I'm downloading, um, th there's you know th there's a lot of uh, concerns there and and Nix has some interesting ideas uh, around that around sort of making those sorts of things hermetic, um, enforcing uh, certain things like hey if you were to use a wget like you would have to uh, validate the hash otherwise your build wouldn't be hermetic those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that I think that's probably not going to happen until next year. But um, there's some interesting stuff that they're they're working on there, um, and there's some interesting stuff that they're working on with getting the tooling to generate uh, salsa provenance spec because they are because they already build the entire universe and they have a tree of all those things. They're able to kind of say, hey, we can actually show you salsa level three all Nix packages, um, more or less. Uh, so, which should be um, interesting. There Anything? Some, oh, yeah, go ahead. Some other uh, things came up in some of the other discussions uh, in other communities. Uh, like we are talking about S bomb for like applications, right? But what about S bomb for our infrastructure, S bomb for our pipelines and stuff, right? Uh, like what uh, task are using? What images are using? Do we need to account for that? So it's not going to be in the Cyclone dates and SPD, but uh, there has to be some accounting of the infrastructure that actually build your application. Uh, I don't know if anyone has any thoughts uh, on that. Yeah, so um, you might be interested in discussions. Uh, some of us might start happening, uh, that might start happening. Uh, so there's there's a couple of things, because um, I, I agree with you uh, about that. And it's, not, it's also not just, for example, the SBOM itself. It, it's stuff like, uh, or, or, you know, it's, it's not even just some of those things. It's, it's also... Hey, if I have a dependency on, like, if my application has a dependency on some SaaS service, exactly, yeah, yeah. you know, I want to know that too. And, and so it becomes this very, very complicated problem. So uh, Jacques Chester has that, that uh, article around the universal asset graph, which pretty interesting thing. Um, I was talking with Santiago uh, earlier this week on um, stuff like what he called uh, hypergraph which seems like a similar sort of concept of like, how can we start to just sort of associate um, arbitrary references and relationships against arbitrary data that we can then use to start to figure out the dependencies just between, you know, systems. And I'm just going to use that term as broadly as possible. Like systems could be software. It could be, um, it could be infrastructure. It could be, you know, uh, like, you know, you can imagine like, hey, I have a scan report and I want my scan report to refer to a specific hash of a thing or whatever. Um, I, I definitely think that there's there's stuff uh, on that front. And so some of that discussion is starting to happen of like, what sorts of things can we do um, at, a, at a very, very high level, right? Because not just thinking about, hey, do we need something like an infrastructure bill of materials or a service bill of materials or whatever, um, but but kind of thinking about how do we at a at a very high level start to think about 
how do we create references and relationships between these services so that at some point we can do queries against these things, right? We can go and say, hey, I, I know what's in my infrastructure and I know what's in my software, but I want to go back and figure out like this Pi PI package, what, what are its you know, what, is, what was it, it's SBOM and what was its relationships and did somebody else run scans against it yeah. that such that they were, you know, and can I go in and, and run more complicated queries? Like as an example, right? Like if, if somebody is doing security scans on a regular basis and that data, let's say is open source or whatever, are they um, signing that and including it somewhere? And can I go and figure out that yes, this thing sort of referred to it and yada yada, and that I can go in, say, you know, did somebody do a security scan against this package within the last week? Mm -hmm. And the same thing with all of its dependencies and so on. I, I think that is going to be a very, very difficult problem to solve. Um, and one that I think we're starting to have some uh, initial discussions on, but it's gonna, it's gonna probably take some time. Yeah, this is very long to you. If, if you can let me know, I'm happy to part, participate in the discussion. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's very very early on. I'm mostly just trying to figure out who in the uh, who who in the community is interested in having these discussions, and then we can start uh, having having them. Is yeah. this also related to the conversations about whether the attestations will be um, part or referent in a small file? I remember having these discussions. Uh, I don't know. Where was it? But there were people, I, I don't know if it was Cole, but um, he mentioned that perhaps attestations should be included on the small files. Yeah, so um, this is where there, there's some interesting uh, debate. This is one of the things that we want to have that debate around is uh, the way that, right, the way that folks are mostly doing it today is that people are making claims on the SBOM file itself and sort of making a broad claim about the SBOM file. And then within the SBOM file, they're not really making claims on what the dependencies are doing or anything like that. And so you ha yourself have to sort of transitively go through and figure some of that sort of stuff out. It, it is worthwhile to, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, figure some of that figure some of that stuff out so so what we have to do in um in the future is sort of figure out some of those details like like does it make sense you know to sort of individually attest every dependency and then you know like you can go up and down a chain you know as as deep you need to right at at some point are we attesting the the processor or whatever right um so so that's a, a an interesting um thing and so on, on that front, I think the big thing is, is we're trying to, I think, separate out the data from the attestation, right? Where you can go in, let's say, hey, I'm going to follow this dependency and I'm going to pull down the SBOM for that dependency, but I'm going to expect a separate attestation for that. I'm not going to say that, hey, this high level SBOM is attesting to the security, everything. It's going to be you know, and this is, is a big debate also around salsa is like how much is salsa, for example, like a, a salsa attestation, how much is it claiming? Like, is it, you know, it's by what we've defined in there is, is it is definitely not claiming anything on its dependencies, but what counts as a dependency? Like, you know, if, if I have a package manager and I'm, a, if I'm a Debian package manager and I'm pulling down GCC and, and, and I'm compiling GCC myself to distribute with Debian. Well, is the Debian package manager responsible for upstream GCC code? You know, those are some of the questions. And then you have, you know, cases like Red Hat, where Red Hat is introducing their own patches. And so all of these things kind of complicate the issue. And I think we do need to have some sort of um, discussions uh, either in the existing groups and preferably in the existing groups. I, I think we don't need more. Uh, you know, more committees and, and, and working groups than we already have. Uh, but I, I think we do need to sit down and have some of those discussions. Uh, answer your question, Victor? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Thank you. Cool. Um, looks like we have somebody new, uh, Faisal. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. Yep, yeah. yeah, um, I'm Faisal. Um, 
I'm not new. I've been in the calls before, but but uh, yeah, just just kind of silently listening. Um, I think um, a test regarding attestation. I just had one comment, right? I think I am I'm seeing right now uh, because I I work mostly in the field, right? For enterprise customers and also for for small to medium sized customers as well. Sometimes, the the issue of attestation is coming up. But I think different people have different definition or understanding based on their own domains, right? What they are doing. For example, you were talking about Debian, right? I'm sure if you will go for risk five meetings, they will be talking about attestation at the firmware level, right? If you go in the open source community, they will be talking something else. I think we we need we need to in in my view, at, at a high level, we need a document or we need a source where we can clearly define what attestation is, what are the different use cases there, and and what people are exploring right now. Um, th this is just my general comment. It's not regarding what you were discussing before, but 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 I think we need more info on that because. What I have observed is different people are talking different things. They have their own context. They want to solve that problem differently based on their scope, right? So so having an overview would be good unless it already exists and I haven't seen it or something like that. Yeah, so on, on that front, um, I don't think we have like clear, um, as like a, a community clear definitions uh, of like who is responsible for what right now. Um, but within, you know, salsa provenance spec and some of these other things, the things that are coming out of it is, is stuff like what, what claims are being made in an attestation and, um, that, that sort of stuff, I think you're naturally going to see, um, as time goes on, uh, folks will be making claims that, you know, make sense for them. And you might have, you know, third-party auditors or whatever to certify those claims in some way. Um, but, you know, I think that, yeah, the big thing now is, you know, just because somebody has signed a thing, what does that mean? That's why we have like sort of attestations, which are kind of coming in and say, hey, I am signing that I generated, for example, like I might be signing the fact that I generated an SBOM and I am saying this SBOM to the best of my knowledge is accurate. Right. Um, and if it turns out it's not accurate, then you can go back and be like, well, maybe I don't trust this person who's signing it anymore. Um, that's kind of the, 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 the way that things I think are, are going. And so you'll see stuff like, you know, a builder is sort of going to be signing that. Yes, I built this thing. And um, based on how I built it, I am assuming nothing got compromised. And I think the thing that you'll start to see is, is, is um, we'll start to probably apply. And this is, once again, this is just my opinion here. Um, other folks can chime in. Uh, we'll start to see um, attestation, like we'll start to see like a segregation of duties around these things in a way that sort of makes sense, right? Because if you start to see attestations coming from a single identity, right, that are saying, oh, I pulled down the code, I pulled down the dependencies, I built it all, um, I pushed it to the artifact repository, I did all these different things, and I am claiming everything's good. You might say, well, that's a really broad set of claims. I might be a little worried uh, about that compared to something like, hey, uh, you know, if you're using, let's say, Spire and, and those sorts of things, you're, you're saying, you know, I have one a particular set of like one particular task that pulls down the source code, another task that pulls down the dependencies, uh, another task that builds it, another task that goes out and publish it, you know, publishes it, some other tasks uh, and potentially even in, in separate sort of security domains that are going out and, you know, scanning it and doing whatever. Um, and those sorts of things might, you know, you might say, okay, now I, I feel significantly more comfortable um, about the claims that are being made there. But yeah, I, I think right now there's not a great, um, there's not great definitions around who should be doing what, um, you know, what identities, and I'm using that term very broadly there, uh, what identity should be performing and attesting to what things. Did that answer? 
Yeah, and it, and it answers the it answers my question, right? But 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 again, just like you were explaining everything, right? You you are you are talking about mostly the software and the dependencies which are in open source domain, right? But how people do build internal softwares, they are generally different. They do not have those dependencies clearly defined today. The processes are missing. If you go to a risk five meeting, right, which is which the, the folks who are dealing with the firmware level attestation of different things, right? They have their own ideas here, right? I, the process is right. Yes, you are claiming something, somebody will sign it and then you will kind of verify it that, okay, these I trusted. So that thing is clear to everybody. But I think there are different use cases here, firmware people want to operationalize this thing differently. Um, the open source community is moving towards salsa, right? Probably a, a refined version might come for internal softwares where vendors will develop something on their own and they will say this is salsa plus or, or some name it something else, right? But and and then then there are the IoT domains and everything. The, the, the idea would be that that let's identify these domains, right? Because supply chain, when we talk about supply chain security, my, my issue is that that we shouldn't focus too much on open source. A lot of people do develop open source, but in-house development exists. And it is, it is a fact uh, and in all in big enterprises, they all are leveraging open source, but they are also developing a lot of their own softwares, how they promote stuff from, from, from one environment to another environment. It's it's very convoluted space right now. It's not uh, not as simple as, as as it might look, right? So, so just just what wanted to give my feedback, and that's why I do come to these these meetings as well, just to listen in where the community is going. But but yeah, there are other things as well outside which which might influence this thing. Um. Yeah, no, and and uh, and on that front, um, I know that we are very interested. Like, if you know folks in the firmware, the hardware sort of space, and how they're viewing some of these things, we would love to have chats with them because at some point, um, we would like to you know begin to root the trust further and further into hardware um, as much as is possible because that becomes a little bit easier to kind of manage. Um, and, and we're interested in seeing how other folks are, you know, um, approaching the problem as well. And we also want to make sure that, you know, given that this is supply chain is such a holistic problem, um, you know, because you're talking about, it's not just the software I built, it's the software that the things I depend on built and it's those things and it's my operating system and it's not just my operating system, but it's, it's the hardware I'm using and the hardware that I'm, I'm, uh, you know, building on, right? Because, because if if it turns out, you know, if Intel was backdoored, where it's, you know, none of what we're doing here <laughs> matters. Um, uh, but I think those sorts of things are, are conversations we definitely want to have, just to make sure that largely, you know, we don't necessarily all need to be in lockstep, but are we more or less um, moving in similar directions? I think that's, you know. Uh, very important to us. If you know anybody, if there's anybody that you think we should be talking to, if there's any groups, if there's somebody you think, hey, in a, in a meeting in you know the next few weeks, I know it's the holidays, and everything, but uh, or next month or whatever, um, who might want to give you know, a little presentation of how uh, firmware providers are approaching the supply chain problem, we we would love to hear from them. Yep. So, so I do not know about the vendors, whether they would want to open up their process, but certainly I'm, I am also looking for this confidential computing and risk five meetings, because what's happening in, for example, trust execution environment or TPM level, right? Those are some interesting uh, developments as well. Uh, again, root of trust is a thing. Uh, whenever people are talking about root of trust, ideally they're going for HSMs. And uh, that 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 is already there. It's an established thing. People use it today in enterprises. But again, there are developments around TPM, T, trust execution environments. Can we leverage them? And whether it makes sense to leverage them or not, right? In this case, is is another open question, right? So yeah. Again, yeah. Uh, just here to to listen to your uh, view as well. That okay, what what you guys are thinking in terms of open source? Yeah. Yeah, so um, I think on that point, um, 
uh, agree with you there. And, and if anybody else has any opinions, feel free to chime in. Um, I, I think the thing that we're, you know, we're interested in, and because some of the stuff that we've been working with is we have been working with some of the folks like Spire is getting TPM integration support. Um, you know, some of the other things we're doing are getting TPM uh, integration support so that we can start signing with the hardware um, and stuff like that, so that you know you can have uh, make it very easy to to um, you know as of to signing with a key that's stored in software. You know, like stored in memory. Or, you know, like you could have it at TPM um, sign some of that stuff. Um, the thing that actually I think you know, and I've had a couple of conversations with Intel and a few other folks is. Um, I'm not, you know, I don't think anybody here at least is asking for like, hey, we want all the vendors to sort of open up how they're doing stuff at a hardware level um, as much as uh, start to provide, similar to how there's the TPM spec, right? Start to provide um, better APIs in how somebody would integrate, you know, how we would integrate with some of these things. Um, because, you know, as folks have sort of uh, said multiple times, I think is, is the, the TPM specs, the way that they're, you know, designed and the fact that there's so many optional components and, you know, lots of differences between the different things, it's become kind of uh, an implementation headache for a lot of folks. Um, but on that front, I think it's more of the, the, the generic, like, are we all applying similar sorts of rules? Can we build... Uh, you know, whether it's an IEEE, ISO, whatever standards around some of these things, can we start to build, provide community standards around some of these things so that when people are building the software on top of all this, um, that we can be, you know, uh, we can be fairly consistent. I think that's kind of a, a big thing, and which is one of the reasons why we want to, um, you know, uh, collaborate with uh, some of these folks. Okay. Yep. Uh, good to know. If anybody, if any opportunity comes, I'll, I'll possibly we'll will bring folks here, right? So, um, but yeah, um, it's it's good to know uh, in general as well what's happening in the community and um, yeah, t just like you said, TPM, right? TPM should you should generate the key and basically then sign that thing, right? But but who is generating that key, right? If if I am a if I am a person who has kind of hacked the system, the TPM is there. And are you talking about built-in keys by the vendors here, or you, I can build those keys as well in TPM? For example, trust execution environments can also run code as well, right? So who is providing these keys, right? If I am the person who can manage everything, right? So I manage everything, right? I can sign things as well if for you, if it's my key. I will generate those keys on the fly as well. So, so a lot of open questions exist in terms of root of trust as well. I think, um, yeah, again, this we, we need to find out, yes, attestation, set of claims, somebody needs to sign, somebody needs to verify, but how to operationalize this thing, right? That is, that's for, for me, I mean, because I'm in product development, right? So I, I focus on that side. What does it mean, right? People have understood signing and verification for a long time, but, but, operationalizing those things are important. Yeah, yeah, makes makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, these are, and, and this these are why we want to have those conversations with um, some of those folks. And yeah, to be blunt, uh, what I will say is um, if, if some of the security vendors uh, do not start, you know, and hardware vendors do not start collaborating um, more. I have a feeling the, you know, in the open source space, um, a lot of the open source things that we're doing, uh, we will adopt those that are willing to sort of collaborate in the open source space. I mean, I, to be clear, I get that like a lot of vendors are not going to obviously want to expose uh, intellectual property and those sorts of things, but it's more around, you know, I think what you're saying, right? It's, it's like, how should people be applying these rules and, and how do, how can we start to do some of these things um, in a way that, that, you know, uh, makes sense. And, and we would love to kind of also, you know, get more input from, you know, the, the hardware folks so that when we, you know, as an example, right, we didn't really talk too much about 
um, TPM or hardware attestation, hardware-based attestation in um, the white, uh, sorry, in the uh, reference architecture because um, there weren't really a lot of folks uh, from the hardware side who who were available who who uh, wanted to, be able to collaborate. But in the future, obviously, we want to kind of make sure that that we can collaborate with the the hardware folks. Sure. Th thanks. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, anything else? Otherwise, we can uh, end it uh, now. All right, cool. So, um, yeah, uh, next week, once again, we'll be having, uh, I believe, an Amazon presentation on some of the supply chain stuff they're doing. Um, also, in the upcoming weeks, to, for anybody who missed it, uh, you know, we'll most likely have the the paper, the the sorry, the reference architecture document. Um, the draft finalized by the uh, by the CNCF. The technical writers are cleaning some stuff up, um, and then uh, that'll go out for you know um, uh, request for comment. And then also in the next couple of weeks, we'll start to reevaluate um, what the next steps for for this working group are going to be for for next year. All right, um, everybody have a have a good uh, have a good week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.